Hi, I'm Sarah Moser for Choices Coach, and in this episode of Faith Training, I am continuing to talk about Jesus and the Passover, and in this particular video, talking about the Passover supper with the disciples, also known as the Lord's Supper. And so, in the past videos, I've talked about how Jesus is the Passover lamb, I've talked about how um, he's the Lamb of God, and so you can go back and watch those videos leading up to this one if you haven't already. And now I want to really dive into what happened that night. So you can also read about this in John chapter 13, which I had started covering in the last videos, uh, particularly the last video. but. This time I'm in Matthew chapter 26. I just wanted to point that out that you can read about this night from two different accounts, from the book of Matthew and from the book of John. So Matthew chapter 26, starting in verse 17. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, where will you have us prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and they prepared the Passover. So when he says, my time is at hand, Jesus knows he's about to be arrested and be crucified. So he knows this, but we gotta keep in mind the disciples they don't know anything about this. They are still expecting him to have an earthly king. They think that this is the Messiah, he's the king of the Jews, so they think he's going to rule and reign because that's what he's going to do when he comes again. So they know the scriptures of the prophecy. They know that Messiah will be the king of the Jews, but they are not expecting him to be the Passover lamb. They are not expecting him to be crucified. So bear that in mind as, they're, as you picture the scene here. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at, he reclined at table with the 12. And as they were eating, he said, truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sorrowful and began to say to him one after another, Is it I, Lord? He answered, He who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who would betray him, answered, Is it I, Rabbi? He said to him, you have said so. Okay, so let's go to John chapter 13. If we go to verse, John chapter 13, verse 25. So that disciple leaning back against Jesus said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it is he whom I will give this morsel of bread when I have dipped it. So when he had dipped the morsel, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. Then after he had taken the morsel, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, what you are going to do, do quickly. Now no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the money bag, Jesus was telling him buy what we need for the feast or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the morsel of bread, he immediately went out and it was night. So that is the different account from John in the book of John. So now let's go back to Matthew chapter 26, verse 26. So this is the Lord's Supper. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. So this is the thing is, this is foretelling that he's about to pour out 
his body and his blood on the cross, that he is going to die, the sacrificial lamb. So when he says, take, eat, this is my body, he's basically saying, I am the sacrificial lamb that's going to pay all your debt for your sins because the it's the life and the blood that makes atonement for sin. We know this from Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11, and that the life of the body, the life is in the blood, and it's the blood that makes the atonement, or the atonement by the life. So when he says, drink of it, all of you, that that's what he's doing is pouring out his life as a sacrifice that by the blood that it's by his blood and us when we take communion it's his blood that sanctifies us and makes us clean before God it's pretty amazing when you think about it because we're clean by the blood not not anything else and so I just want to point that out because you know in the past couple videos I was talking about God's holy feast days and how they're God's days and so I do want to make this distinction that yes we should celebrate Passover because Jesus celebrated Passover and we should celebrate it from the standpoint that he is our Passover lamb but we shouldn't be looking at it as like this legalistic thing that oh do we have to do that don't we have to do that like uh, it's not about a legalistic thing or a checklist. You know, we, had, we are saved by grace alone, by our confession of faith that we believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose again. It's by this confession of faith that we are saved. So there, there's not another gospel. That is the gospel and that we receive the Holy Spirit when we believe in him. Like once we have that confession of faith and then we believe in him, like he knows who follows him by who follows his voice. And so the Holy Spirit and us having that real deep relationship with Jesus Christ and having a deep relationship with the Father, you know, that we are adopted as sons and daughters the, the moment we believe, but we also have to follow him, you know? And so how do we follow him? by listening to the Holy Spirit and diving deeper into God's word and and cherishing that that close relationship with him. And so celebrating the feast days is just another way to to be close to God and do what God cares about and celebrate Jesus Christ. That's what it's about because the feast days point to Jesus Christ. The Passover certainly points to Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. And so in, in approaching this subject, we don't want to look at it as like, oh, that's so legalistic. Whenever you're going to rob yourself of the delight and the joy of spending time in God's presence and celebrating with him and celebrating what he's done for us. I hope that makes sense. I felt like the Holy Spirit was kind of convicting me to clear that up a little bit because I don't want you to think that I'm putting tasks on you and oh, you've got to do this or you're not saved because that's not it. That's, that's so not it. I'm just saying that there's more. There's more to this than, than just salvation. You know, salvation, even if that was it, that would be more than enough. But the thing is, we can dive deeper into God's word and deeper into our relationship with God because Jesus died and rose again so that we could be in covenant with God and no longer be separated from God. That we could have this close, deep relationship with our Father. I mean, we see this in how... How Jesus told us to pray he said the our father prayer he taught us how to pray and he modeled that he spent time in close relationship with the father often he spent a lot of time in prayer away from the disciples in this close deep personal relationship with the father and he would say 
I want, he said he wanted us to be one. He prayed that we would be one as he and the Father are one, just as he and the Father are one. So we have to stop thinking that Jesus and the Father are so different and realize that they are unified and they are one, meaning they are united, that everything that Jesus did while he was walking the earth, he did because the Father was showing him what to do. He only did the things that the Father was showing him to do. So we see God in the flesh, like what his love is like through the love of Jesus Christ. Because we needed to see it in flesh and blood form. God knew that we needed to see his love in the flesh because we couldn't fathom it. You know, the Pharisees couldn't fathom it. They were so wrapped up in the rules. This is where legalism comes in, is being so wrapped up in the rules that you fail to ever dive deeper into the relationship with God. That is where we really have to focus our efforts and our energy. So the thing is, whether you do the feast days or not, or you honor them or not, it's just this is an opportunity to dive closer and deeper into that close relationship with God and just be like, Lord, I wanna partner with whatever you're doing. I want to do whatever you're doing because when you really love someone you actually do what they want to do part of the time yeah you actually do that when you are deeply head over heels in love with someone you'll watch a sports game you didn't care about because you want to be with that person right and you wouldn't call it you wouldn't call it a chore because you're like i'm delighted to be in your presence i'm delighted to have your company that's the difference between whether something is legalistic or whether something is like, no, this is just, this is a delight because the relationship is at the heart of it, not a checklist. It's not a checklist. Throw your checklist away. I will, I mean, you can keep that to stay organized, you know, let's not go crazy. But the more that you dive into a deep, close relationship, with the Lord and the more you realize Jesus died so that I could have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that I could walk with my father that I could walk in a close covenant relationship with God the Father and hear from him by the power of the Holy Spirit because Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins making me clean in the father's eyes like it's mind-blowing amazing amazing with that I'm gonna pray Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much. I thank you so much for being Yahweh Yira, the provider of the precious Lamb of God, your, your Son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua the Messiah. I thank you so much that he paid the price for my sins. I pray that anyone that is praying this with me now, if they have not accepted you as their Lord and Savior, I, I just pray that they would do that now and pray this prayer with me. Lord, come into my heart. Be the king of my heart. Be the king of my life. I believe that, that Jesus Christ is a son of God. I believe that Jesus paid the debt for my sins so that I could be clean in the eyes of God and that I could have eternal life. I ask that you come into my heart and help me to be strong enough to follow you. Please guide my path. Light it up and show me, show me what my next steps are. Give me a thirst for your word so that I can learn more about you. And God, just thank you, thank you, thank you for adopting me as your own. I want to see your glory and I want to hear your voice. Please fill me full of the Holy Spirit and speak into my life. I ask these things in Jesus name, Yeshua the Messiah. Amen. Thank you so much. And if you prayed that prayer with me and you've just newly accepted Jesus Christ as, as your Lord and Savior, please send me comments or send me a private message. 
and please let me know and I I will be praying for you and I want to um, I want to support you in that decision and I love you it feels weird to say that when I don't know exactly who is listening but the thing is I do these videos because I love Jesus because I love God the Father. I love hearing from the Holy Spirit. It will change your life. And, um, and I do these videos because I love you. And I want you to know him and to embrace him. And I want him to change your life so much. And I want you to have the most abundant life, free from guilt and shame and condemnation. I want you to have, have it all. And that's why I do this. And uh, it's not about me, though. To God be the glory. And uh, it's not about following me. It's about following him. So I love you. Be blessed. And I'll see you next time.